died. And I could have looked up to see how far Gatlinburg was. But you see, it just didn't make any difference to me. I didn't care how far it was. It was some kind of a trail town. It must not be too far away. And I was going there. Okay, my name is Lucky. And uh, I gave myself that name because I didn't want to risk somebody else giving me tell you why I heard this story about a, a hiker a woman and she she wanted to get her trail name on the trail so she started out she had a trail name and she and she's hiking along and she fell down in the mud and got mud you know all over and thereafter she was called dirty bottom <laughs> well that's a risk I didn't want to take so, so people told me that you know I, I'm uh, a little, I'm some I'm old a little bit, and uh, people friends of mine said, well, when I told them I was going to hike the Appalachian Trail, they said, well, you sure are fortunate to have enough health to try, and a wife who said yes, and uh, and so I didn't think fortunate had much of a ring to it, but so I picked Lucky. So that's my trail name, Lucky. And I've, I've had a, a number of really good nights uh, on the trail, and good days and good evenings. But right up there at the tippy top uh, somewhere in the top cerebral was a night that, that started off as a terrible day. It was, uh, it was really cold. We were in the Smokies. There were six of us. And uh, uh, in that six uh, was uh, the, the hiking Vikings. And uh, they, and there was another a pair of hikers with them. They're a lot faster than I am. They were well ahead of me. And then, I, then me, and then there was a guy behind me. He must have been hurt. That's the only way he could be behind me. But his name was Stretch. And he was an Israeli, a really good guy. So we're hiking along, and it's a perfectly miserable day. And in the afternoon, it starts snowing again. And I come into a clearing, and there's a four-by-four four post there. And on this post is a note that says, Lucky, we're, we decided, this is from the four people ahead of me, and we decided to go into Gatlinburg and, and get a hotel and, you know, get some hot food and a shower and whatnot and get out of this storm. <clears throat> we were all planning to go to a shelter that was appropriately named Ice Water Shelter. This is right before you get to uh, Newfound Gap. Well, you know, I wanted to go. And, and the note said, if you want to go, call this number. Well, I dialed the number. I could have anybody. But I left a message that I'll be at Newfound Gap. And I said, an hour. I really think I'd be at an hour. But I wanted to make it as little time as I could. And I, I, so I started hustling like crazy trying to get to Newfound Gap. And I did get there in about an hour and ten minutes. There was no one there. And I, you know, you think, well, I guess outsiders might think, well, you should, friends should have waited on me. No, they shouldn't. They should get the first shuttle they can get and get into town. Through hikers, they don't stand around and wait on each other. I mean, they just don't. I mean, they're all going. If you did that, you'd just never get to, you'd never get to Mount Katahdin. That's the, you just wouldn't get there. You just don't wait around, period. So, but, but, but I already had this on my mind now for an hour. And uh, whether they're there or not, I'm a ride in town with them. While I even see them in town, I'm going to Gatlinburg. Now I've got a book on me. You know, I have an electronic copy of uh, A.W. Wells' Guide. And I could have looked up to see how far Gatlinburg was. But you see, it just didn't make any difference to me. I didn't care how far it was. It was some kind of a trail town. It must not be too far away. And I was going there. So I thought, you know, the, the people that can really get rides, of course, are... You know, to get right down to it, are attractive women. They're the one that's really get the ride. And I'm not a woman and uh, nor attractive, but I thought I could get a ride because if they didn't give me a ride, I might freeze to death. I mean, it was a terrible storm. So I start walking down the highway, and I'd practiced a lot you know, about hiking before I went on a trail, and I'd hiked a lot on smooth surfaces. And I figured I could hike. I figured I could hike three and a half miles an hour on that surface. And so it was It was early in the afternoon. It was like, I don't know, 4 o'clock maybe. And I had two, two and a half hours before dark. And how far could that town be? And I'm going to Gatlinburg. No, I'm gonna, and I'll get, a hit, I'll get a ride too. When I walk, and walk 15 minutes go by, 30, there are no cars. There's no cars coming. 
There's no cars going. And the reason is this storm is so bad, the government has closed the road. There ain't no cars. I'm going to have to walk to Gatlinburg. Well, okay, fine. Let's we'll walk to Gatlinburg. So I kept walking and walking and walking. And finally, here comes a car up the road. And it's one of those... Um, uh, it, it was a federal officer that that works in the park. And his car pulls over to where I am on the side of the road, thank goodness. And he rolls the passenger side window down. And this gush of warm air comes out. <laughs> oh, my word. It felt great. And he says to me, where are the other four? I don't know where the other four are. They were ahead of me. And I told him, I said, I don't know. They were ahead of me. He said, get in the car. <laughs> no, Adley. <laughs> and so I threw my trunk in the back. I threw my uh, pack in the back in his trunk uh, uh, and got in the car. And we rode right back up there to Newfound Gap. And he pulls into the parking lot and blows his horn. And when he does, my four friends come boiling out of this restroom up there that I, I didn't realize was there. Not only is there a restroom there, a building, but it's heated. They were hiding from that storm in the restroom. And they'd called and tried to get a shuttle, but the shuttle wasn't going to come until they checked with the, with the federal boys to see if they'd close the road. And indeed they had. And that's how the federal guys found out they were up there. And at first they had told these people, look, you're just going to have to sit tight. I mean, and then later they said, you know, we got an officer in the vicinity. He's coming. At any rate, we all piled into this car and went down to town, into Gatlinburg. And these four had already reserved a, uh, uh, a motel room. And it was a two-room deal where they had a bedroom in one room and a sofa in the other that pulled out. And they had two beds on the wall. I mean, there was a bunch of places to sleep. And this thing cost us, I think there were five of us in it. At any rate, it cost us like 12 bucks each for the night. So we all got showered and cleaned up, and then we walked to this place that was a ribs place, and they had an unlimited supply, and they just kept bringing these hot rolls. And we ate hot rolls and ribs and laughed and talked. It was an absolutely terrific night. And I think about it every once in a while. This is one of the things about uh, hiking the trail that uh, is the best part, and that is you just never know how a day's gonna end. Here in the middle of the afternoon, I'm hoping I can catch up with my friends and get out of the storm. Well, a little before that, I'm determined to walk another five or six miles to this ice water shelter and make the best of it. Now I'm trying to get up with my friends. And I do, and it and it all just sort of works out. And uh, so that evening we're sitting around in, in the warmth. We're clean, we got on dry clothes, and we're eating ribs. What a, what a fantastic day. So that was one of the best nights I ever, and days, afternoons I ever spent on the Appalachian Trail. Very good. Very good. And I'm going to interject one thing. Would Lucky have ever made it to Gatlinburg? Well, it was 17 miles to Gatlinburg. <laughs> so Lucky probably would have never made it to Gatlinburg. <laughs> you know, I asked that officer that question. He said, 17 miles. And so I said, well, wait, wait. How, how far is it before the first road? I knew they couldn't just close off every road in the county. So how far is it till the first road intersects that mountain pass road? Because that's how really, I mean, that's where you're going to get some traffic and I'm going to get a ride. And he said, 17 miles. <laughs> <laughs> that's perfect. I like it, I dig it, I want more of it. Mm -hmm.